There's a question that's been on my mind, even burning a hole in my heart for a while. Do you feel like too much is changing too fast, and it's harder and harder to keep up? Maybe it's the news, or never feeling like you have enough time to read and know all that you ought to. After all, 90% of all the data in the world was created in the last two years. Maybe it's what to study or what your kids should study, given that a college degree no longer guarantees a good job. 35% of all the skills deemed important today will have changed in five years. And automation portends to eliminate hundreds of millions of jobs within our lifetimes. Maybe it's what growing old will look like. Or maybe it's simply new apps for your phone that completely change how you used to do things. I see and feel this in my own life. Every day is a deluge of new information. No two days are the same. I find myself living the cliche that change is my only constant. I see this with my friends who wonder whether their children protesting is the new normal or when the next climate calamity will hit where they live. There's no way to really know today what tomorrow holds. I reckon many of you feel this too. So many things are changing so fast and our utter inability to predict or control them. For the past few years, I've been diving deep into this sense of not knowing and continuous change. I call it flux. Today, I'd like to offer you what I've learned. But first, how did we get here? How did this world of flux come about? My view is that for the last few centuries, we've lived in a fixed world. By fixed, I mean permanent, predictable, controllable, or at least for those with a shred of power, the belief that we could control things and change them with our own sheer will. So politically, we created borders to separate people and cultures. In business, we built bigger-than-life factories with a vision they'd last forever. We structured most corporations as top-down hierarchies with fixed chains of command and walled gardens of control. At home, we relied on a tight-knit nuclear family and sacred bonds of kinship. These bonds often extended to work as well. If you came from a family of cobblers, you were a cobbler. If you came from a family of bankers, you were a banker. If you had the privilege of studying for a different profession, regardless, you could aspire to and often rely on lifetime employment. And when change did happen, it took longer to take root. Keeping up was slower. The effects of the first Industrial Revolution took more than 100 years to be fully felt. That's five generations. In this era, in nearly every sense, we developed a fixed mindset, a state of mind that assumes that we and the world don't change. And yet, today's world is constant flux. Things are changing far more quickly than they used to. No wonder it feels hard to keep up. There's a big disconnect. Nation states are in flux. Of the 10 largest populations in the world today, only two are nation states, eight are digital platforms. Borders are in flux. True, we have more physical border barriers than ever, from seven at the end of World War II to 77 today. Yet technology is searing through borders that historically policies, work visas, and lack of connectivity kept us apart. Climate is in flux. As temperatures rise and glaciers melt, we have a sense that environmental crisis is approaching, but we don't know exactly when the tipping point will hit. Business is in flux. The average lifetime of a corporation has plummeted from more than 60 years in the 1950s to less than 20 years today. CEO tenure has plunged as well, with leaders forced out by impatient shareholders after a year or two. Expectations are in flux. They're rising and diminishing simultaneously. On the one hand, we're capable of achieving more than ever with unprecedented tools and technologies at our fingertips. On the other hand, in some fundamental ways, we're less equipped than ever to survive. Think about it. The smartphone is only 12 years old. It has revolutionized almost every aspect of life and 
made us far more dependent. Perhaps most of all, the future is in flux. A predictable life cycle no longer holds. We're even starting to edit species. And it's not just change itself, it's the pace of change. Any one of these shifts would be hard enough to grasp, much less keep up with. But all of them at once and accelerating velocity? Like, holy moly, no, right? <laughs> and yet, this is it. This is who and where we are today. And so our minds fall into anxiety. We worry about today and fear the future. The more change and uncertainty we experience, the more we grasp for what's no longer there. 25 years ago this summer, I was finishing my junior year at university. I was studying in the UK, preparing to travel around Europe, with big plans to do my PhD. The phone rang in my flat, this was still the era of landlines, and I picked it up to hear my sister's voice on the other end. Why would she be calling me, I thought. She's several years older than me, we weren't particularly close at the time. April, are you sitting down? She asked. I need you to sit down. I sat down on the reading chair next to the phone and waited for what she had to say. April, something horrible has happened. Mom and Dad were killed in a car accident. You need to come home. I stumbled, faltered, didn't know what to say. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. Then I tried again, and it shook the house. In that instant, whatever I thought my future was going to be vanished. My entire world became flux. 25 years later, we're all living in a state of permanent impermanence. Maybe it's your job, your kids, your bank account, or the news. Some aspect of reality as you've known it isn't holding together. When my parents died, I never would have imagined that I'd be up here talking about that day. Nor did I have any idea of what it meant to let go. Not of the past, but of the future. I had to do it. I had to let go of the future I had in mind and the future my parents wanted for me. Little did I know that in the process, I was planting the seeds of a superpower. Back then, an ability to control and predict was seen as the holy grail. Being comfortable with uncertainty was a weakness. Embracing impermanence was a deficit. So my parents' premature deaths were the epitome of what we feared. Now, I don't mean to underestimate the difficulties of that loss. Yes, it was hard, and yes, I missed them. But if I'd continued to believe that I could control my future, or death, or goals and expectations set by society, or the transformation of something beloved, I wouldn't be here today. And yet, the more I see people everywhere grasping to a reality that no longer exists, the more I realize that only by getting out of our own way, letting go of those things that are no longer fixed, and in so many ways never were, can the future have the space and oxygen it needs to emerge. And I have three simple suggestions for how to develop what I call a flux mindset, the ability to thrive amidst constant change. My first suggestion is to look to other cultures. Other cultures can teach us a lot about impermanence, change, and flux. Growing up, my father was my best friend and a geography teacher. At our kitchen table, I had a plastic placemat, like many kids do, to contain spills. My placemat didn't have a cat or a ball on it, though. It had a map of the world. Every morning over breakfast, my dad and I would play the capital game. He'd name a country, and over time, I learned the capitals. Names like Addis Ababa, Ulaanbaatar, and Ouagadougou were magical to say, and I dreamed of visiting these far-off lands one day. My dad would often say, the world is bigger than your own backyard. Go explore it. You might even find that it has some of the answers to the questions you ask at home. Some years after my dad died, I visited these places. I still remember my first sunrise in Ethiopia because my dad was everywhere, 
His spirit was in my pocket. His voice was on my shoulder. In Mongolia, his advice really hit home. Mongolia is a nomadic country. Most of its population moves and rebuilds their homes, known as ger or yurts, three times a year in harmony with the seasons. They do this every year, basically forever. This is living impermanence on a nationwide scale. Does this make Mongolians anxious or fearful? Of course not. It makes them strong and resilient and their culture endure. Now, I'm not saying that nomadic life is easy or somehow the answer. My point is simple. This mindset is grooved to adapt to continuous change. It has a more fluid, nimble relationship with control and with nature. In a world of flux, this will serve whoever has it extremely well. And it's not just Mongolia, lots of places in India, the Andes, the South Pacific, and across Africa shed light on this. Don't wait. Learn from them. My second suggestion is to expand your peripheral vision, literally and figuratively. Peripheral vision is the ability to see objects in motion outside your direct line of vision. I think of it as the awareness of everything you're not looking at. Did you know that when you're anxious, your peripheral vision shrinks? So expanding your peripheral vision can literally help reduce anxiety. And what's more, we can train ourselves to expand our peripheral vision. Do you want to try? OK. Here's an easy way to start. You're all looking at me right now. Without looking sideways, what color is the person to your right wearing? Yeah. Now, now you can look. <laughs> All right. OK, next. Ready? Follow me. Hold your hands out in front, kind of like this. Now, place your thumbs on your ears, like this. This is so fun for me to watch. Now, move your hands to the side so that you can't see them anymore. Oh, this is even more fun. I've been dreaming of this moment of getting to see you all like this. Now, begin to wiggle your fingers and move them in just so that you can see them at the edges. Just so you can see them, OK? Now, that's your peripheral vision. Now, hold on a minute. Pay attention. Are you noticing things you couldn't see before? Even if only slightly, do you notice your awareness awakening? Now, when my parents died, it was as though I lost my frontal vision. In order to survive, I had to expand my peripheral vision of life. Now, today I have a far larger family of choice than I would have had if my parents lived. In losing my parents, I gained a community, but only because I focused on what and who was just beyond my range of vision. Now, think about it. Whether it's stretching into new relationships or imagining a more creative, less traditional career, how might you expand your peripheral vision to see new horizons and to see differently? My third suggestion is to learn to let go of the future. Now, when we talk about letting go, we always talk about the past. But no one talks about the future. Now, the lucky ones of us who are excited about the future, we still know it's full of unknowns and nothing is guaranteed. But many of us fear the future. And in so doing, we get stuck, fixated, paralyzed, trapped in a situation we can't control. The more we grasp to what's no longer working, the more we're fluxed. Now, I know this notion of letting go of the future may sound paradoxical, but I actually believe it is the essential difference between people who thrive and people who crumble in a world of constant flux. As Joseph Campbell says, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Parents come to me asking how to help their kids pursue a more meaningful, less traditional path. Professionals ask me how to navigate a future of work that feels like a minefield of unknowns. When these people ask, they know nothing about my backstory. Now, I encourage them to begin by cultivating a flux mindset, this way of thinking and being that's so comfortable with change that you can't help but embrace it as the greatest magic and mystery of life. 
True, I learned how to let go of the future through tragedy. I was forced into a flux mindset, you could say, by circumstances beyond my control. But that's not why I'm here today. Today, my mission is to help people do this without tragedy. Because not only is it 100% possible and essential for human flourishing, it's also a lot more fun. Now, to be clear, letting go does not mean giving up or somehow failing, with all due respect to failure. I am not talking about military surrender with a white flag. Instead, I mean surrender in terms of the yoga principle of a parigraha, which means non-attachment and non-grasping. Being comfortable with change and being able to let go, these are actually our strongest human strengths. They're superpowers in today's world. The pace of change has never been as fast as it is today, and yet, it will never again be this slow. Now, I can imagine, my dad is in this room right now with us. And if I were back at the kitchen table with him and my three-year-old self, or any child or adult today, I would nurture this flux mindset. I would encourage having goals and celebrating their evolution. I would expose her to as many cultures as I possibly could, I would practice expanding our peripheral vision together, and I would remind her that a flux mindset is her special superpower. So to her, to all of you, to everyone watching, don't wait to let go. Thank you.